This is Twit. First of all, you alluded, Ron, to the ways in which Google is taking these uh, many different AI efforts and integrating them into services. And when I have a couple of yep. examples of this, and there's a really interesting discussion that we can get into around this, but just real quick to set the scene. Gmail getting generative AI features uh, called Help Me Write. This will be a feature integrated into Gmail. I think you have to opt into it that you could say like, I need to write an email to this person that says I'm not going to make it on time. You know, I got caught up in traffic, but I want to reschedule for next week. Uh, check my calendar uh, for three open uh, time slots or whatever. And then you generate it, uh, generate it, help me write it. And boom, instead of me having to write this entire email, it sends that person all the information. You can expand it, contract it, that sort of stuff. Really weird. Um, messages, Magic Compose, which we alluded to last week on the episode, where you can rewrite text messages. So you put in a short text message and you tell it the style that you want it to rewrite in and it, ex and it creates a new text message from what you've already put there. Maps, getting an immersive mode that flies through, this looked really cool, that flies through the route that you're navigating to give you kind of a virtual tour of what that route is going to look like. It, it's almost like you get to experience your route um, in, and uh, you know, they use AI uh, and computer vision to kind of merge together this experience. So you can see what that route is going to look like photos, getting a new magic editor, which is kind of similar to some of the AI, um, editing features, uh, that we've seen in Google photos and on Google camera, uh, before, but this is almost like that taken to the next level. It's like the example they have is this kid sitting on a bench and it's like, we want the bench to be more centered in the photo. We want the class clouds to be bluer. We want to remove, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I mean, it's just like all these edits being made to the image that normally, you know, again, it's an example of how AI is doing things that normally we would have need to, needed to be skilled in the, uh, in the feature set of, of an app like Photoshop in order to do all this stuff. And it would take a while to make it all happen. And now it's like you click it and you tell it what you want it to do. And it does the thing. So I think the question there, the, the interesting perspective that I've been talking a little bit with Micah Sargent here at Twit, he brought this up. And ever since then, I've been thinking about it, is the, um, the authenticity or lack thereof when we have AI systems writing all of our communications for us. He mentioned to me that using an AI to write a text message, he's like, I hate it. I was like... You know, I want to know when I'm talking that when I'm when I'm having a com uh, having contact with someone, communicating with someone that we're actually communicating, and it isn't a robot or a computer that's kind of standing in for me. And I don't know. There's some there's some something there. Does that does that impact you guys at all? Like how do, how do you feel I about that? I mean, per personally, I, th I think that texting is such a, sh like, I'm going to spend more time telling the AI what to say yeah. in response than I short, can just text it myself. Short bursts, it's right? Exactly. That's my thought. Yeah. What What do you think, Wynn? I do think that there is, that there might be some room for this, but this is kind of like by case basis or your mileage might vary. It was really funny because uh, not in text. So maybe this invalidates the argument, but I don't know. I think sometimes we do talk to different people, like maybe whether it's introducing ourselves to like a new person that we want to engage in with business or something. I don't know. Sometimes like I, I know my husband and I often have arguments about, okay, I want to like, I don't know, engage this landscaper and they act, and some people do actually still do a lot of like work and, and kind of contracting through, you know, tax through like word of mouth through recommendations. So I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just very focused on, well, sometimes people are just not sure how to approach people or not sure how to sound like, like not weird when you just, uh, you know, text someone out the blue. So I could see that there, there's probably places where this might just help someone kind of like write that first intro text or yeah. be able to kind of analyze things. I don't know. I, 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 I think, it, it, it almost feels like a pre-runner to something else, like an experiment to let people, hey, here's some, here's Magic Compose, play around with it and see if, if it can be of use to you or even get like, you know, human use feedback on 
whether you ask it to zhuzh up your text and it accidentally insult, insults the person that <laughs> yeah, you're talking to. That, I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like that it's a, it's like a starter, you know, it's like a little test bed that they're sticking their toe into the water yeah. to kind of well, more broadly do that. And this isn't the starter because that, that was one thing that I, that I mentioned to, I mean, isn't necessarily uh, the starter I mentioned to Micah, like I already on my text messages that come in, uh, you know, it, give, it gives me those little one word answers. Yes. Not really. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and I do use those. So is that me using an inauthentic communication because the computer presented that? Or is that just me going quicker to the thing I was already going to say? Mike, how do these features land for you? <laughs> OK, so this is a great all about Android moment because I want to call out Ron for the example he gave us before the meeting <laughs> about uh, he wrote a love letter to his wife using uh, chat GBT. Um, so I just did it actually myself. It, I did it in Bard, just to oh, note, I did it in Bard. I did it in yep. Bard as well, actually, yep. just to be uh, perfectly clear and on the record. So I actually just did it while I'm kind of sitting here and it is remarkably good and feels very authentic to talking I'm, about, you know, how she makes me a better man. You know, it's very generic, but, um, you know, I think I'm going to get, you know, some good, you know, yeah, kisses tonight I, after, after she reads this. I did it. Yeah, I did, I did it. I, so as part of the announcement, they said they were going to embed the, the, the little, like the little magic wand or the sparkly icon or whatever in Gmail. I signed up for it. It got enabled to my Gmail account. And so the first thing I opened up the prompt and I said, you know, help me write an email to my wife about how much I love her or something like that, whatever I said. And it wrote a very, like to Mike, Mike's point, a very believable kind of thing, you know, and I, I sent it to her and she came in and she was like, Oh my God, that was so nice. And I was grinning and she was like, you didn't write it. Did you? I was like, no, Bard did it. But, um, uh, and, and like the examples they gave in the demo, like Dave, Dave Burke of Google, who we talked to in the interview that you can listen to at the end of the show, um, did the live, you know, did the live demo of it. And it was like, you know, I want to send an email to someone congratulating them doing a good job. And like, it's this idea of like, short attention span approach. Like I want to, I want to email Jason and, and thank him for doing all about Android and being so awesome. And it will write this whole thing and insert it. And it's almost like greeting cardification of our email. That's exactly where my mind was at. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you pulled the words out of my brain, Ron, because as I was hearing this, I, I, I started to kind of really clued in to the fact that like, we already kind of do this. We already put, um, our control over what we say about how we feel about someone, just using this as an example, in the hands of someone else. We go into a store, we pull a card off the shelf, and we read it, and we go, oh, those words match what I want to say. So I'm going to buy yeah. this, and I'm going to take these words and offer them as if they are mine. And I mean, obviously, right. they're not. And, it's a and, greeting card, and, you know? Are we, are, we losing, are we losing the skill or the training to write the those words yourself sincerely like because there was a time there was a there was a time in our civilization in 1835 when someone growing up said i want to be a poet i want i want to be a writer i want to learn how to do all this sort of stuff and like when was the last time you met somebody well, actually i know somebody who's a poet but still um but, <laughs> but i'm just saying like like the 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 going back you know and i know this is counter to what we were just saying about programming about the chatbot in dev studio and how that making it easier does it make my life any more efficient to have a, a, a AI bot write a love email to my wife? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like I'm looking for ways, I'm looking for way, ways to introduce this into my life and make it realistic. I will say another example of how I used Bard recently was I was at, um, it wasn't in email, but it was just like, and the idea of them integrating it into email, into workspace, into docs, into, you know, into spreadsheets and stuff like that, I think is really compelling because like I was on a work call the other day and we were brainstorming, you know, to come up with a new product kind of naming type thing. And I was in Bard and I was just like, give me suggestions for a product that, and with these attributes or whatever. And it gave me a list and none of them were viable. Mm. But of like the 10 things it suggested, at least three triggered sparks amongst the people I was talking to that led to possibly viable options. Ah, there you go. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Launchpad for something yeah. else. I don't know. We're, I, so we're all people that talk on podcasts. So there's a level of comfort with discourse, with words. And I, I know maybe this is just me kind of 
uh, trying to optimistically apply this. But I can't imagine like so many times in my life where I was less confident <laughs> enough and I had some social anxiety where, you know, like maybe if I wanted to like let someone know something, whether that was something serious or important or something where I just couldn't find the words or was worried that yeah. I it sounded aggressive uh, or not, whether it sounded like sensitive or not to like whatever the situation was. And I, I mean, I'm a person who very often when I send someone something, even if it's kind of innocuous, I'd be like, go to my husband, go to my, my sister. Hey, does this sound like yeah. you know, mean or whatever? So I, and I, and, and to kind of some of the point that y'all said, like at some point you kind of realize that it's not, it, it, that there is a, there's a level of facsimile, uh, facsimile and uh, artificiality, right? Like you, so I, I, I can't help but think that if someone, you know, really cares about crafting their own words that they hopefully would still do it. But I don't know, maybe that's just me being optimistic, but I do think there is probably a place for this. It's just not maybe, um, maybe what we expect or maybe what, uh, especially us as people that are people creating content who show up and put our faces and our voices on the interwebs and that who write for a living might maybe that maybe like we're not the audience for this per se. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, when I think about it, like that feature, I'm super torn because as they were showing it off, the Gmail is the one that I'm primarily thinking about the uh, write for me, uh, Gmail feature. I was like, yeah, you know, there are emails that I write that are very, um, you know, very much the same between every person that I send it to. I don't copy top to bottom, but I write basically the same things with slightly different words, you know, invites for shows and everything. Like there's only so many ways you can invite, you know, 20 people a week onto, onto our shows <laughs> and have it be differentiated and why differentiate when the facts need to be there and all these kinds of things. So, but at the same time, like, I don't, I don't feel right handing the keys over to an AI to write all of my communication for me. But I bet you there's somebody out there that's willing to go that far and willing to say, you know what? I'm not writing another email ever. I'm just going to tell, help me write what email I want to write and do some light editing every single time. I, I guarantee you I mean, people are going to use that. Honestly, it's not that like, like it reminds me of when I would ask a professor to write a, a recommendation letter for me or a teacher and they say, write it for me and give it to me and I'll, I'll edit it and then send it. Like yeah. I, I do it at work all the time. I tell people I'm going to write this up, send it to me. I'll make the edits and then send it and put it, you know, kind of like, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm vacillating between it because I can see that like Jason, you're right. Like there's a lot of redundant emails that I write often that have to do with the same thing. And I can, and it's easier to do the heavy lifting of the work and then just edit it to make it sound in my voice than do it all from scratch, you know? So I don't know. I think, yep. I think there is value to it, but I don't think it's replacing the thought I put into what I do. That was know? something that uh, the big reaction that I saw online during the keynote, you know, it, it, they were doing live coverage here, Leo and Jeff Jarvis. And so I was logged into the discord and kind of live, live blogging my own thoughts and everything. And there were a lot of people really commenting on kind of the blandness and the sameness of the AI responses and how it's, oh, really, it couldn't get more creative. And I was, and when I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, but how much of our communication that we do on a regular daily basis is very bland and is yeah. very, you know what I mean? <laughs> like there's so, there's so much of our communication. We like to think that we're really creative and everything like that, but so much of business is derived around these very very set in, you know, in stone processes and things. It's just a reflection of how we write. <laughs> so if it's yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I look forward just, to hearing it's from you. Us. Best wishes. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, so it's interesting. I think this is, you know, when we're talking about AI and ethics and and uh, best practices, you know, these are things that I think businesses are going to have to start making decisions around. Do we allow our employees to allow, you know, to use these AI tools to write emails? Or do we say, hey, no, that's not okay because of secrets or because uh, it doesn't impart a human and a human quality to the conversation. And we're a business. And we want people to feel like we're connecting with them and these systems remove the human, you know, these things are going to have to be discussed and figured out on a company-wide basis. I think, uh, I think that's in our future. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. IT Pro from ACI Learning offers binge-worthy cybersecurity and IT training in everything your team needs to advance your IT learning. Use code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro membership. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more.